and it's good to be with you guys tonight. Um, so honored to be here. Really honored. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Pastor June and the whole team for hosting my wife and I and, and just allowing us to come and worship with you guys and just share a little bit of our hearts. Um, and honestly, that's what I'm going to do tonight. I, I don't I don't have like a, a formal set of teaching notes or like a sermon. I'm, I'm going to share a few thoughts uh, just related to what the Lord's been speaking to me in this last season uh, and something that I think he's really, he's, he's highlighting to the church, to the body of Christ uh, in our nation right now. I've just, I've titled it, uh, Going Back to the First Things. And I'm getting that phrase, first things, from uh, Revelation chapter 2. And that's where Jesus is, uh, Revelation 2 and 3, Jesus is uh, speaking to the churches, and he has some specific messages, and he's, uh, he's, um, he's encouraging them and saying, hey, you're doing this and this and this, you're doing some really good things, you're really faithful, uh, specifically with the church in Ephesus, you're, you're really faithful, you don't tolerate evil men, you're, you're, you have a lot of good things that you're doing, and that's good, and that's a, that's a real evaluation from Jesus. And then he also says, now there's some things that aren't so, that, are, that in your midst that aren't uh, as good right now. And, th and those need to, that needs to change. And he specifically highlights the idea of, of um, returning to our first love. And returning and going, even going back to the things, he says, go back to the things that you did at first. And uh, even in my own life, in, uh, in recent months, I feel the Lord just calling me back and saying, you know, John, go back to those first things, the simple things of reading the word, prayer, fasting, intercession, just some of the basic uh, things, singing the, singing the Bible. These are things that I, I've, I've been doing, but in one sense, I feel like I've kind of lost a little bit of that focus because of some of it's just life, different circumstances and different seasons and busyness. But how many of you know, it, regardless of, of the intensity of the season that we're in or the circumstance, we can still have a, a vibrant heart in God. Amen? Just because life is, feels super intense or, or, or it's, a, it's a heightened season of, you know, fill in the blank of grief, of loss, of of pain, of challenge, whatever, of, of, of adversity, uh, that doesn't prevent us. It doesn't have to, to become our all-consuming focus and, and kind of pull us off course. We can, we can stay connected with Jesus. Uh, in, 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 and again, it's going back to those simple things. So I just want to talk about that a little bit. And I'm going to preach to you guys and I'm going to preach to me <laughs> because I need it. Uh, but you know, I, I, one of the, one of the first things that I wrote down, uh, just even in my own time as a, you know, just talking with the Lord about this, probably the, the first thing that, that was highlighted to me was I, I need to read the word. And in one sense, it's like, well, I'm, I'm doing that. I'm reading the word. I'm, I'm spending, you know, time regularly each day. And I've, I've got like a, a little... Bible reading plan that I do, um, but I need to not just read the Word, I need to meditate on the Word, because when I meditate on the Word, it gets inside of me in a different way. It's like, uh, you know, when Jesus says, man, when he's speaking uh, to the enemy in the wilderness, and I think it's Matthew 4, he's saying, uh, man doesn't live on bread alone. Man lives on the words that come out of God's mouth. So when I say I want to read the word again, what I mean is I want to, I want to feed on the word of God again. I want, I want those words, the words in this book, I want those words to touch my heart. I want those words to move my heart. I want those words to stir hunger and passion for Jesus in my heart in a fresh way. And I think a, a practical way to do that uh, 
is yes, having a you know having a Bible study plan. You know, you're reading through the New Testament. You're reading a specific book of the Bible. You're reading through the old. You know, you're reading through the Psalms. Whatever it is, but as you read, when the Lord highlights something to you, stop, pause for a minute. If you're like me, I'm, I can get very you know goal focused. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to read X number of chapters today, and so I start reading and. And then, you know, something will be highlighted to me. It's like, oh, that's really good, but I got to keep going because I got to finish. I got to get to my, you know, the end of my chapters today. And, and it's, no, 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 John. Pause. If something is, highlight, is highlighted to me, I need to actually stop for a minute, slow down on the inside, and I need to go back to that phrase. And I need to repeat that phrase back to the Lord. And I need to say, I need to say it back to the Lord. I need to pray it. I need to sing it. Because when I do that, when I meditate on that phrase, something is going to happen. The Lord is going to uh, open up just a fresh revelation of his heart through that phrase. The Lord is going to speak to me in my life about that phrase. A, a lot's going to happen if I will take the time to slow down. And so, what, does that make sense? When I'm saying I want to read the word, I don't just want to read it. I want to digest. I want to feed on the word of God. I want it to touch my heart. I want it to affect the way that I do life. I think uh, one of the other things that just jumped out at me was I need to pray. <laughs> and I laugh because part of my vocation at the house of prayer in Kansas City. I, I'm an intercessor. That's what I, that's part of what we do. We pray. So, so why am I saying I need to pray? What I mean by that is um, a few things. You know, I have a prayer list and it's good to have a prayer list um, where you're praying for family, friends, uh, circumstances, whatever. You're, you know, that's actually really good. Uh, and I, and I want to encourage you guys, if you don't have uh, a prayer list where you're, con where you're regularly lifting up different people to the Lord, where you're praying for your own heart and your own life before the Lord, do that. Write, write it down. It's not like you have to read through every single name every single day, but I'm saying it's a, it's a, it's a roadmap for you to, to just engage with the Lord and focus in. But um, even with my prayer list, Sometimes I get in a rut. I get, I just kind of, I'm like, okay, I'm going through and praying for this person, this situation. Okay, good. Okay, next thing. You know, right? And when I'm saying I need to pray, I, I, want, to, I want to do my prayer list. I want to engage with the Lord in that way. But I also, prayer, prayer looks, uh, there's a lot of different ways and forms of prayer and when I look at the Psalms, like David's Psalms in the book of Psalms, those are like journal entries. Re like when you really look, like David is being so vulnerable with the Lord. He's just totally laying his heart bare and saying, this is going wrong. I can't, I, I don't know what, to, these guys are chasing me. They're trying to take my life. I, I'm a mess. I have sin issues in my life. Like he's just, he's just like, and it's like, whoa, David, you know, <laughs> he's, he does it there. Like, am I supposed to be reading this? Did he want, you know? Like, this, it's so personal, it's so vulnerable. But what that does is it gives me permission, and it, it actually is, it is an exhortation for me and for all of us. We need, to, we need to, in the place of prayer, we need to open up our hearts. It's not just going through the list and saying, you know, saying that, that, that's good. I'm not saying don't do that. But I'm saying we need to open up our hearts in the place of prayer with the Lord. We were singing about it earlier tonight. The Lord is, he has opened up his heart to us. The Lord hasn't held any, any part of his heart back. He's, wide, he's held it wide open. He's waiting for us to open our hearts to him. And when I, um, when I slow down and when I stop and when I pause and I even sometimes just journaling and writing out some of my thoughts, because sometimes I'll be feeling all different kinds of things, but if someone were to ask me, you know, how's it going, John? I'm like, uh, I don't know. I'm feeling all kinds of different things, but I, I don't quite have a handle on it. Sometimes if I actually write it out and just journal before the Lord, it actually helps my own 
my own brain kind of connect with what's going on. And I can pour that out before the Lord, good, bad, and ugly. You know, Lord, this, this, is what's, this is what I'm excited about. This is a dream in my heart. This is a desire. Lord, this is really discouraging. This feels so heavy. This feels like it's never going to end. Whatever, you know, this struggle, this situation with this person, this, whatever it is, my own weaknesses that just keep coming up. I keep, I keep saying that I, I have this pattern of, I, you know, I'm interacting with people this way and it needs to, ch- that, you know what I mean? You get real with the Lord. Pour out your heart before the Lord. You look at the Psalms and look and see and how, how, how open David is with his God. And, and let it drive your own heart into that place of like, okay, just opening your heart before the Lord. That's what I say when I, when I feel like the Lord's saying, Lord, John, you need to pray. You need to, you need to connect with me. You need to open up your heart to me. Um, one of the other things that was highlighted as I was, as I was just kind of just staring at life and just this current season of Kinsey in my, my life, um, the, I, I found myself writing out, you know, I want to fast. And uh, there's a lot of different ways to fast. Uh, you can fast food, but you, uh, you can fast fast food. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to, okay, just I got to pause now for a minute because I just made a really dorky joke. I don't have kids yet, but I can promise you I'm going to be the dad that tells like really corny jokes where the kids are like in junior high and I'm telling some joke and I'm just cracking up and they're rolling their eyes like, oh my gosh. He's, he said that like a million times and it's not funny. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be that guy. So anyways, just wanted to say that. Um, but uh, no, when I say, when I say I want to fast, I, um, I look back in seasons of my life when I've, when I've fasted, and it's it looked different in different, in different seasons. Sometimes it is like I'm fasting food and it's just water. Sometimes I'm doing juice. Sometimes I'm doing veggies. Sometimes it's for a day. Sometimes it's for three days. Sometimes I'm fasting, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, like a speech fast where I was just silent for a day or two. That's actually like, you'd be surprised at, in one, in one way, how hard that is. But at the same time, if you actually do it for a day or two, your heart becomes so tender uh, before the Lord. And that's kind of my point with, with even bringing up fasting. When we fast, we're not earning something. It's not like a spiritual merit badge, like, hey, I'm Mr. Superhero Fast Guy. It, 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 there's, there's, that doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with that. Um, I, what I want to say, though, and I want to testify, as uh, when I look back at my own life in the Lord and the seasons where I've given myself to fasting, um, what I have noticed is a heightened tenderness in my heart to the things of God. It just, it's true. I've just, in the times when I've given myself to it in a focused way, I, I cannot deny that there is a, a, a sharpness in my spirit to the Word of God, to the Holy Spirit, to the things of God, and... Uh, and I want to, that, I look back at that and it's like, Lord, I want, I want to do that again. Not, again. not because I'm trying to prove something or because I'm trying to earn something. I'm doing it because I, I want to position my heart to be tender before the Lord. I've noticed something else when I've, when I've looked back at different seasons when I've been fasting in a focused way. And you know how the Lord will highlight different things to us and you, you realize, okay, the Lord is directing me to do this or calling me to do this or, you know, lay this down or, you know, pursue this person, you know, dis- disciple this young, whatever, you know, f- fill in the blank, all kinds of different things in our life related to family, uh, vocation, ministry, work, school. The Lord will highlight different things. And, you know, sometimes when the Lord will highlight something and you're like, yeah, I probably should. But there's that little bit of that resistance in your heart. It's like, oh, this is going to be kind of hard. I don't know. If I... Man, when, I'm, when I've given myself to fasting, there's like this, it's, it feels so much more natural. To, I'm like, yeah, no, 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 I really do want to do that. <laughs> like the, it, 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 it breaks down our defenses, kind of pounds our flesh a little bit in a good way. And it just makes it, 
I like how Mike Bickle says it. It like it takes like the yes in your heart and puts like an exclamation point on it. It's like yes, no, I really do want you, Lord. I really do. I'm, I'm going for it. I'm going for it this time, really. And so um, that's what I mean when I say, man, I, I want to. And so I want to encourage you guys. You know, talk to the Lord about it. It's going to look different for different people. It may not even be like a food fast. It may be a media fast, like fasting. You know, music and movies for a little while. I've actually I've done that. And I'll tell you what, it's intense, but I will, I can, I, I, have, I got a testimony. That's maybe a different story for a different time, but that, um, or like a social media fest, mm, little, you know, like turning off Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. And I love Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and I use it and it's, it's, they're awesome tools and it's a great way to connect with people. But there are times when I use it as an escape and I'm just like, you know what? I really need to dial down and connect with the Lord right now, but I'm kind of lost in this social media world. And, and I want to unplug from those things, you know? I want to lock into passages of Scripture that I come back to regularly, certain passages, and just pray them back to the Lord. There have been seasons over the last several years of my, my life in the Lord where, where I took certain passages of scripture, uh, oftentimes the Psalms, Psalm 16, Psalm 45, Psalm 23, um, Psalm 1, uh, some of the, Psalm uh, 33, I think. Anyways, some of the different Psalms, and I would lock into a Psalm for like a season, and what I mean by locking in is, I would just, that Psalm would be like my go-to, like during the day, like you know, I'm lying on my bed at night. I can't fall asleep. I just start praying Psalm 16. Lord, preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. Oh, my soul, you've said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing. I would just start to say these phrases of these psalms back to the Lord, and, and it would touch my own heart. I mean, I'm saying it back to the Lord, but my own heart is getting impacted. I'm driving in the car. Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. I'm, I'm doing dishes. <laughs> Preserve me, oh God, for you. <laughs> you know, whatever it is. I'm using that one, and it sounds kind of funny because it's like it's such an intense psalm, but I'm like, you know, or I'm going out for a walk, and I'm just loving. I'm a nature person. Like, I lo like in other words, like, scenery moves my heart, like, scenic, like, different, you know, whatever, landscapes, that kind of thing. It's like, oh, I love that. So I'm going for a walk outside, and I'm just connecting with the Lord through the beauty of creation, and, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm praying one of those, Lord, I thank you that you're shepherd. Thank you that I shall not be in want. Thank you that your rod and your staff comfort me. And I, you know, you, you say those little phrases back to the Lord and it kind of becomes just part of your, your life in the Lord. And I'm not necessarily just doing it in my own like focused quiet time. I'm doing it just throughout the day at different points in the day, just even for a minute or two, just little short phrases really impacted my heart or, or better yet, even sing it back to the Lord. Some of you may be thinking, well, I don't really have a good voice. You know, I probably shouldn't. <laughs> like, I don't know what the Lord thinks. The Lord loves your voice. He really does. He made it. He gave you, the, he gave you that voice, and he loves that voice. Um, and so, you know, maybe you don't want to sing some scripture passage in front of a bunch of people. But when you're in your car or when you're at home or wh whatever, you know, you, you can sing some of those scripture phrases back to the Lord. I want to encourage you, lock into a psalm. Or lock in, Psalms are meant to be sung, anyways. Um, lock into another passage of scripture, a passage that moves you, and just begin to pray it to the Lord. I take just little phrases of a scripture passage, and I'll say it back to the Lord, and I'll put it in the form of thanks. So, you know, it says um, in Psalm 16, a little bit further down, it says, uh, The Lord is my portion. You are my portion, my inheritance, my cup. Indeed, my heritage is beautiful. My, you're, my, you're my reward. So I'll, I'll, I'll say that, but I won't just say it just word for word like that. I'll say, Lord, I thank you that you're my portion. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that, that you preserve me. Lord, I thank you that my goodness is nothing apart from you. Lord, I, th I thank you that goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. You know what I mean? I, you, you, when you put it in the form of thanks, you're, you're, you're stating it. You're making a statement that it is true. It is real, and I'm grateful for it. 
and and so that that taking those passages, saying them back to the Lord, you're going to be surprised at how it impacts your heart. You'll be surprised at how it just affects the environment of your heart. Sometimes in, in different seasons of life, intense circumstances, challenging situations, those kind of become like our all-consuming focus. Even like if it's not like right in front of us, it's in the back of our minds, we're thinking about it, there's this unsettled feeling inside, like we just can't calm down, we just can't quiet down inside. And you take one of those scripture passages, you just start praying it to the Lord, I thank you that you're my portion. Thank you that you're my inheritance. Lord, thank you that in your presence is the fullness of joy. You take those phrases, you begin to speak it back to the Lord, speak it over your heart. It, it alters the internal environment of your heart. Peace begins to fill my heart. That tenderness, I'm like, oh, like his presence. Because when, whenever the word, there's a principle actually, that when, when the word of God is spoken, the Holy Spirit moves. You go back to the beginning, back to creation. When the word, when God speaks, the Spirit moves. And so that's, that, that principle hasn't changed. Like when, when we speak the word of God, when we sing the word of God, the Holy Spirit moves. The Holy Spirit moves on our hearts. We have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, but when we begin to speak the word, we're accessing that treasure house called the glory of God on the inside. And so I just, that's, that's something that the Lord is highlighting again. John, you need to go back to some of those passages, some of the same passages, some new passages. Take those passages and, and speak them back to me. Um, I need to pray in the spirit. <laughs> How many of you guys know Corey Russell? He's a leader. He's a he's a leader at IHOP. He's one of our pastors, and uh, he's from Arkansas. So he's got a real. He's got a thick accent. He's like, I got to pray in the spirit. You know, he just just he just kind of. Anyways, I just I laugh when I think of Corey and praying in the spirit. <clears throat> but um. First Corinthians fourteen says, when. When we're speaking in a tongue or praying in the Spirit, something is happening in our inner man. Our, our, our inner man or our spirit man is being edified or built up, strengthened. And I, uh, in certain seasons, and I still do in a measure, but in, in certain seasons, I've, I've spent 20, 30 minutes a day just praying in the Spirit. And... It has a similar effect of fa to fasting, I think, in some ways. There, there's just this tenderness in my heart. I'm just, I'm taking phrases of Scripture, and then I'm kind of mixing it in. So I'm, I'm saying some phrases in English, and then, I'm, and then I'm praying in the Spirit. Because Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, he says, when I'm praying in the Spirit, my spirit is, like something is happening, but my mind is not fruitful. In other words, like when I'm saying, oh, I, I, my brain isn't, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what I just said. But, but something is being said, and my spirit is bearing witness to that. So Paul says, okay, what am I going to do? What's the outcome? If I'm praying in the spirit, but my mind isn't fruitful, ah, I'm going to do both. That's what he says in 1 Corinthians 14. I'm going to pray in the spirit, and I'm going to pray with my understanding, or in a, in a language, like a known language, in my language, which... You know, for us is English or or uh, Korean or or you know Spanish. Fill in you know fill in the blank. Whatever your whatever your most comfortable language is, take take um take Revelation four. Revelation four is the throne room scene. Many of you guys are familiar with that, where it says there's a. It, it just kind of lays out the throne room. There's a throne standing in heaven. There's one cedar on the throne. He has the appearance of a jasper stone and a sardius stone. There's lightning and thunder. There's a storm. There's, there's fire. You know, it's it's a crazy scene. But more than just cool, like oh wow, that's cool. It's a real place, guys. That's a real. That is a real geographic location in God's creation. God built Himself a dwelling place, the Revelation four throne room. So when I'm praying in the Spirit, I'm. I'm praying in my prayer language, but then I'm also throwing in phrases from Revelation 4. And I'm just, you know, a lot of times I like to just pace. It helps me focus. You can sit, you can rock, whatever. You can, what I, you can do the Lou Engle. <laughs> Got to get a hold of God, you know, whatever. But, but um, however it works for you, 
Um, but but I'll just I'll pace, and so I'll just I'll I'll just take a phrase from Revelation. Father, I thank you that there's a throne standing in heaven right now. Thank you that there is a throne standing in heaven. And I'm praying in the spirit. Thank you that there's one seated on the throne. Thank you that you're holy. Thank you that there's a rainbow of mercy surrounding you. Man, you do that 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Same thing. The, 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 the atmosphere of my mind and my heart changes because I'm opening up my heart. I'm opening up my spirit to the Lord. I'm connecting with him. And, uh, you know, I may have been going into that time feeling anxious about X, Y, and Z, feeling upset, feeling frustrated, uh, feeling lonely, feeling whatever. I can, I can be feeling any emotion. I can walk in and I can just start praying these phrases in English and then praying in the Spirit. And it's like, man, it's good. <laughs> it's so good. So I want to encourage you guys uh, Pray in the Spirit. Take, take, just set aside. It can be during, you know, during your time with the Lord. You can do it anywhere. You can do it in the car. You know, um, you can do it when you're doing dishes. You can do it when you're cleaning your bathroom. I, um, yeah, there you go. So there's, there's that. <laughs> I'm laughing because <laughs> when I, I, I clean my bathroom in our house, I, and I actually love cleaning it. Because I, I love, I just love getting stuff clean. It's like, it takes a little bit of work, but then you're done. You're like, yeah, it just, just feels good. And it's like, oh, okay, it's clean. But I'm laughing because uh, when I clean my bathroom, oftentimes I get uh, song ideas. <laughs> For real. Like, no joke. I get, I get, I'll just be, you know, scrubbing away in the shower, you know. And, and I'll just, you know, I'm, I'm in silence. I'm just sitting there scrubbing. And I start getting this, I'm like, hey, that's kind of catchy. I should go over to Garage Band and record that thing, you know? Maybe come back to it later. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a song idea. But um, so that was kind of a tangent, a little side point there. But um, one of the other things I'm thinking about, I'm staring at my life in this season, things that I've been doing that I want to do more, or things that I haven't done in a while I want to do again. Um, I want to pull back from distractions, uh, I can just totally get sucked into just, I'm on my computer and I'm checking my Facebook and I'm checking the news and I'm checking my email and then I'm checking Facebook and I'm then showing my email again. Not that I'm expecting any super urgent email, but I'm checking it again. And then I'm checking the weather and then I'm checking the news again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, okay, okay, little, little bit ADD, little, little OCD, um, but that's but it's real. That's that's the scary point. It's a little there's, there's some there's some truth in that, and it's like okay, I need to, I need to, I need to pull back. Like I need to dial down on the inside, and and focus. Sometimes it's it's even like just okay. I'm setting my phone in my backpack with it closed in the it is zipped up in the compartment, and I am over here, and I have my Bible, and I have my notebook. And this is where I'm going. Um, sometimes you have to seriously be really intentional about it. Uh, um, and it'll look different for everyone. I mean, different. There, there's all kinds of distractions. Uh, but you guys, you know, if, if we actually stop and stare at our lives, we, we know what those distractions are for us. And, and it's like the Lord's saying, okay, let's, let's pull back. Let's pull back. Let's unplug a little bit. Let's disconnect a little. Let's look at a little bit of space so that we can give ourselves to the one thing needed. You know, I think of Mary of Bethany sitting at the Lord's feet, and Martha's doing all kinds of cool stuff, actually, really good stuff, helpful stuff, useful stuff, and, and the Lord's like, one, there's one thing that's necessary. What, and so it's, it's not even like, okay, well, no, I just, I'm not going to do Facebook ever, and I'm not going to do it. So, no, 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 you can, that's fine. They're helpful tools, they're value, you know, you can connect with your friends, that's great. But where is it on your priority scale? How, how high on the priority list is it? And if it's too high, that means, that means our time, our, like our life in God is suffering because that means our life in God is lower on the priority list. That's, that's what I'm talking about. And so I, I'm just I'm saying, Lord, I want to I pull back. I want to I prioritize things. 
and yes, I mean, I, I have I have responsibilities. I'm a worship leader in the house of prayer. I have a worship team that I lead, that I pastor, that I serve. Um, I oversee, I've been overseeing like auditions. So like all singers, musicians coming through the house of prayer, I'm like the audition guy. I, I have lots of different roles and responsibilities and that's fine. Um, and it doesn't mean I don't do those things, but it means it means I'm not consumed with them. And it's like, I'm, I'm distracted and thinking about all this. It's like, okay, just write it down so you can come back to it later. And right now, let's engage with Jesus. Amen? All right. I actually think this, yeah, I have this last point in here. This is kind of a, a, little, a little bit of my testimony and a little bit of my story that I've alluded to earlier. Um, And I want to say it in the right way. So I'm just thinking of how to say it in the right way. Um, we want to pull away from things that aren't just distractions, but things that, uh, that have the potential to really kind of dull our spirits. What I mean is if, if fasting or if singing the Word of God tenderizes my heart, if praying in the Spirit tenderizes my heart, then there are things that can actually harden or dull my heart. And uh, several years ago now, the Lord, the Lord uh, spoke to me in a really specific way, uh, and I knew it was just it was crystal clear. It was like this: this is the Lord. Um, I'll, I'll give a little bit of context. In college, I was a very fiery believer, pursuing the Lord wholehearted. About halfway through college, I kind of backslid, and I knew it. I, it wasn't like I just kind of lost my way. It was like, no, I know I'm backslidden. <laughs> I've pulled away from the Lord, and it's not okay, and my life stinks, and I hate this, and I don't want to be here, but I am, and I don't know how to get out, and, you know, this, this, this whole thing. <clears throat> um, and because I had pulled away from the Lord, I was filling it with something, because when you pull away from the Lord, the scary thing is there's a huge void, and you will fill it with something. And so what I filled it with was music and movies and media. And those, and those things in and of themselves, a lot of those things aren't necessarily bad, but I was using it as a coping mechanism with how I dealt with my life. Like, I always had a movie on. I always had music on. And it was good, bad, and ugly. Like, every kind of, you know, movie and music and whatever. And it got to a point where the Lord really broke in and said, you know what, son? This road... The phrase that the Holy Spirit gave me was thin ice. He said, if you, if you continue to walk down this path, it's thin ice. And I felt it. I was like, yes. <laughs> it's like, I know, I get it. I understand. I know. I feel stuck. I feel trapped. I don't know how to get out of this cycle. But with that invitation or with that word from the Lord, it wasn't just like this, the Lord's mad at me and he's coming down at me. It was like a coach or like a dad that cares about his child and saying, hey, it wasn't just like, you need to stop doing this. It was like, there's, a, there's an invitation from the Holy Spirit to actually break away from these things and to reconnect with the Lord. And, uh, and so I did. And it was really scary and it was really hard. And I didn't do it perfectly initially. Like, um, it, it, you know, I would, like, I would do my time in the house of prayer and then I'd go home and I'd be like, I'm not going to watch a movie. I'm, I'm, what am I going to do? What, what do you do? What do you What do you do if you're? I mean, what am I seriously like? Books? I haven't read books in years. What am I supposed? To, you know, that sounds boring. I want to watch a movie. I'm not going to watch a movie. You know, I mean, that was that was a real wrestle for a season. And and even like music. I mean, I'm a musician. I love music. I love good music. I don't want you know. I don't want cheesy music. I want quality music. You know. And it didn't matter the genre. I'm like, as long as it's good. If it's excellent, I like. I'm I'm into it. Cool. And so the Lord basically was saying, hey, if this, it, nothing wrong with music, nothing wrong with good music, but if the music that you're listening to isn't moving your heart towards me, John, I need you to let it, I want you to let it go. In this season, I want you to pull away. And I was just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> you don't know what you just said. No, he did, because he's the Lord. He doesn't know what he said. Um, but it was such a big deal for me. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And I, I want you to hear me out now as I'm saying this. What I'm not saying to you guys is, hey, you need to get rid of all your music. You need to stop listening to secular music. You need to get rid of your movies. I'm not, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying, though, is have an honest conversation with the Lord about whatever, about the things that you're watching or the things that you're listening to. Have a genuine, on, genuinely honest conversation with the Lord and just throw the question, Lord, is, 
is what I'm watching and is what I'm listening to, is it, is it causing my heart to like be tender to the things of God? Or is it, kind of, is it kind of dulling and hardening my heart? Is it actually making it, is it, is it creating some space between you and me? Is it making it hard to connect with you? Have an honest conversation and then just go from there. Go with whatever the Lord highlights. That's my point. Again, don't, don't necessarily, oh, well, that's what John did, so that's what I should do. No, 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 don't do that. But, 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 but do have a serious conversation with the Lord and just ask. Ask the question. Go with what the Lord's highlighting and go for it. And, you'll, and, 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 and watch your heart grow. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's my point with all this. Like, what, like we're, wanting our, we're wanting hearts that are growing in love for Jesus, hearts that are tender to the things of God. This, this is what we want. At the end of the day, really, that's what we want. And so, can I get an amen? Okay. I, I'm, 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 yeah, like, as I said earlier, I'm preaching this to you, and I'm preaching it to me. <laughs> we need to hear this. We need to come back to this over and over again. I, you know, uh, Mike Bickle, he's the director of the House of Prayer. Um, I've heard him say multiple times, he's like, man, I sign up again every couple months. When we say sign up, he means like signing up, like I'm going after the Lord. I'm, whole, I'm going wholehearted, intercession, labor, you know, I'm doing it. He does that every couple months where he's like just this realigning, like Mike's like in his 60s spiritual father, man of God, you know, really helped, you know, lead this, this major prayer movement that's just, you know, touching the earth. And he's saying, oh, yeah, every couple months, I have, to, I'm, I have to realign my heart with the Lord. Lord, I'm in this for you. I'm in this for love. I want my heart to grow. I want my heart to be alive. When I hear that, it's like, yes, okay. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a, cultivating a lifestyle of like a, just aligning our hearts with the Lord, with the things of God. I want to take a minute and, uh, and pray for us, um, and then we'll, we'll transition to, to ministry time. Um, before I pray, I want to say this. I'm going to, I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to invite you to, uh, if there's anyone that, any, any of you all that want to come up uh, to receive prayer, uh, it can be something specific, it can be something general, but if you feel like you want to come forward and receive prayer, we have a team of pastors here that, are, uh, that can pray with you. Um, but I'm, before we do that, I'm just, I want to take a minute and just, uh, pray about some of these things that we were, that we were just talking about. And then I'm going to shift gears and, uh, we'll do a little bit, a little bit more, uh, worship and some ministry time. Father, we thank you for, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word's alive. We thank you for the, the power of the word of God that transform our hearts. Um, Lord, we thank you for these, these, uh, spiritual disciplines Lord, uh, Lord, we thank you for the discipline of prayer, of, of the word, of, of fasting, of, uh, of journaling before you, God. All these different things, God. I, I ask that you would, each of us tonight, Lord, you know where each of us are at. You know our lives. God, would you speak to us where we're at tonight? Speak to our hearts and highlight things to us. God, I ask that you would highlight things that, um, that we're not doing right now. Or that used that we used to do that you're wanting to highlight again that we need to re-engage with. And God, I ask that you would highlight also highlight things that we're doing right now that that we may even need to let go of, things that are that are causing us to be distracted or or to cause our hearts to be less sensitive to the things of God. Lord, I ask Holy Spirit come and highlight, highlight things to our hearts, speak to our hearts. God, we say we want to be yours. We want to, we want to be wholehearted in our love for you. Lord, we want to be closer to you. We want, we want to know you in a deeper way, Abba. We want to know your heart. We want to be close to you. Lord, re remember the prayer of your son when Jesus said, Father, I desire that they would be with me where I am. That, that cry in the heart of Jesus for intimacy with his people. God, we want... We want to respond, Lord. We say this is our heart's cry. We want to be close. We want to be close to the one that we've given our lives over to, that we've said Jesus is the Lord of our lives. God, we want to be closer to his heart. I just ask for a grace right now, tonight, a grace on our hearts. As you, Holy Spirit, as you highlight things to us, I ask for grace to say yes. Grace on our hearts, God, to say yes. Yes to giving ourselves to the word. Yes to seeking you in the place of prayer, of being vulnerable before you, of opening our hearts. 
But we're, we're saying we want to say yes to letting go of, of things that are distracting us, that are, that are taking up our time and our energy, where that are, that are, that are uh, holding our affections when we need to be giving them over to you, God. I, I ask, Lord, give grace tonight. Each of our hearts, give us grace.